What's happening guys? Kenny here again and today I've got another it's actually a different kind of video It's gonna be a, a response tag video and um, The tag actually came from my buddy Lee over at Bama knife guy And if you guys haven't checked out his YouTube channel uh, Just head over and check it out and give him a sub if you like his style Which if you like me, you'll probably like Lee. He's a pretty straight-up dude with uh, a lot of good stuff to say and it's just a really good all-around dude, and um, I think you'll dig him. So uh, thanks a lot, Lee, for tagging me in this. This is definitely a fun, fun video to do. Um, it could be a very long video for me, as you guys well know, if you know my, my channel. But I'm going to try and keep it relatively short, because um, I do have a lot of knives to bring to the table here. But actually, a lot of them are uh, dispersed across the United States right now. So that's actually going to help me a little bit and keep the numbers down. Um, I can at least fit it on this, uh, this cutting board, which is a good, good thing. So, um, yeah, I'm going to try and do this relatively quickly. So if I, if I skip through knives a little bit, um, you know, bear with me, please. Uh, I do have my coffee right here, which I might be sipping here and there. And I'm going to get right into this thing. So, um, yeah, so the, the idea of this video is american made knives okay um i could have got even more into into it and gone just american made all around but for one that would at least kept this video a little shorter too but i think i'm leaving a little bit on the table if i do that so i'm just gonna do um american made across the board um as far as like if it's at least mostly made here if the steel was manufactured in another country I'm going to go ahead and do it. Like, uh, of course, anything made like M390 uh, is bowler. Um, anything that's, um, you know, obviously like Sandvig's going to be, you know, not going to be American made. But I'm just going to go ahead and put anything American made. So it's essentially the most of it's American made, at least, you know, um, it, the, the steel might have been made a different place. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get into it. Here we go. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and bring in a few of the knives that kind of started the channel. Um, uh, you guys, you guys know I don't talk about fixed blades much, but both of these fixed blades were made here in the United States, and they are two of my, you know, my favorite knives, uh, just because they do have some sentimental value. And being that this was probably the the knife that I bought that, uh, you know, this was my beginning into like really getting into modification and stuff. Uh, this was my first micarta scales, essentially. Um, I made this set and another set at the same time, and they came out excellent. I really love them. And they make this knife just really comfortable. This is the, the K-Bar Turok. Uh, Jeros is the designer. And uh, yeah, it's a really enjoyable knife. But uh, this is American made. I think uh, uh, New York, I believe, is where these are made. Uh, or oh, I forget the name um, of the city. But yeah. And then this is uh, Bark River makes these, I believe. Uh, this is a blackjack uh, neck knife. This is in 154CM. Uh, this was uh, 1095, by the way. Uh, I think it's 1095 Crovan, I believe. Um, so yeah, and then this is 154 CM and this is a sweet little neck knife that I turned into more of a like a EDC fixed blade uh, I made this sheath for it. This was my first Kydex, Kydex sheath I've ever made um, I put a tech lock uh, On here so you can kind of carry it scout carry. I was carrying this behind. That's why it was this way So I just carry that behind my waist there Really nice little knife with a convex grind. Sweet little blade. So, yeah, um, that's that. And those are the two fixed blades. I'm going to kind of put those up here because I am not going to be able to fit all these knives in here. Uh, next comes, actually, I'll just go ahead and bring this one on because, as you guys well know, if you watch my channel for a while, this is the knife that broke me, guys. Um, this was like one of my first like upgrade my first spider co one of my first upgrade knives um yeah this one is in cpm s30v so this is all american made which those uh two fixed blades were as well uh so this is all made in america um as you can see this is golden colorado usa earth 
And uh, this was my first like upper end folder that I purchased. Uh, there's another one that I didn't purchase that I had before this, but I'll get to that later. Um, and then with that one, I, it kind of threw me off because I, I kind of had everything organized in a certain, uh, to go in a certain order, but I'm just throwing it off because that was kind of the knife that broke me. Um, then I'm gonna go back and go into uh, where I was starting, which is we have the Spyderco Shaman. Um, this is in CPM 4V, so this is a full American made. Um, this is in the Golden Colorado factory, so yep, that's next. Uh, this is a very enjoyable knife. I uh, have the full review coming on this guy. I do have a quick uh, first impressions on it already. Um, as you can see, I did my own um, modifications. I took off our nub there. I also um, obviously dyed the scales green. So that's next. Uh, next is gonna be a Manix 2. That's right. Um, this is the Knife Works exclusive um, in 52100. And of course, this is made in the Golden Colorado factory. Uh, this is the G10 version, of course. Um, and yeah, it's a very enjoyable knife. Uh, then right next to that would be the second Manix 2. Um, there is another Manix 2 that would be here, uh, the Manix 2 uh, Lightweight Maximate. That guy would be right there next to that. Um, and then this guy in CPM Crewwear, this is the Knife Center Exclusive with Smooth, smooth G10. Um, and I do love Crewwear, guys. And yeah, this is made in the United States, so this is an all USA made. So far, we've got all USA made on the table. Um, I will definitely let you know when it's something that's like if the blade is, if the steel's made a different place. Um, next is gonna be, um, in the same fashion, we're gonna go to the PM2. This is, again, the Knife Center exclusive with Smooth, smooth G10 uh, CPM Crewwear, made in Golden, Colorado. So next, um, American made, Spyderco. These are all gonna be Spydercos up here, guys, sorry. I, as you well know, if you know me, I like a lot of spider codes. Uh, spider code does tend to use a lot of different steels, which is why I have a lot of different spider codes because um, I am a bit of a steel nerd. So you'll notice that all of these will pretty much be different steels. So except for of course M4 is uh, one of my favorite steels. So we'll see a few of those. Um, next up is gonna be the Para Three Marathon, guys. That's right, we have the 4V uh, St. Nick's exclusive, Para 3, with red G10 and 4V, CPM 4V, so we got another all-American made knife here. And this is amazing. I love this little guy. Um, 4V is one of my favorite steels, for sure, uh, with crew wear, so uh, these battle, for sure. I have the Para 3 and crew wear as well, with the Smooth G10, so that's actually missing right now. That's with a friend. Um, next is gonna be the S90V, uh, CPM as well. And yeah, this is definitely made in Golden, Colorado. And we have another American-made steel from CPM. So all American-made again. Uh, this is the carbon fiber S90V version, which I picked up off of Elliot from Sharp Thinking. Uh, thanks a lot, Elliot. He gave me a smoking deal on this guy. It was like a factory second. You guys see it almost looks like they meant to do, like they accidentally put an extra jimp there. We think that's why it was a factory second, but yeah, not bothering me, guys. Um, and I know it didn't bother Elliot either. So thanks, Elliot, for the great deal on that, and I do love this knife. Um, I am going to make this smooth carbon fiber, though, probably. Let me know what you think about that, but this is probably gonna go smooth carbon fiber. I might end up making a few of my uh, Para 3 smooth because I do like the smooth G10 much better, but I'll get that in another video. Next, we're gonna have the next Para 3. Like I said, this is the Para 3 Marathon. Uh, that is in 4V. And yeah, um, I did just sell the PM2 of the Blade HQ exclusives but I would have had the whole 
you know, except for the uh, military. I, I got the military for Elliot, so that's with him now. But I would have pretty much had the whole line if I had kept that. Oh, except for I don't have the native or the Yajumbo, which Yajimbo or whatever you call it. I'm not into that knife really personally, but that's just me. Um, yeah, next is going to be Max Emmett, guys. That's right. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen this yet. Um, if you will follow me on Instagram at In the Pocket Knives, you have definitely seen this. But if you don't, if you're not on Instagram, you might not have seen this that I got this yet. But I might end up selling my Manix uh, in Maximit just because I know that I'm probably going to carry this a lot more than the Manix. Although I could definitely have like a Maximit day, <laughs> like Maximit Monday or something. But yeah. Stoked to finally get that guy. I've been waiting for that since the first drop. Um, and then the last of the pair of threes for now. I would have more guys if I didn't have, if I had someone else, if I had the um, the Smooth G10. But this is the lightweight in CTS BD1N, which is also all American, guys. Um, this whole line of Spydercos here is all American steel, all American made. So. All American here, guys, and I am all American, guys. Just so you know, born and raised in California. Um, I am a proud American for sure. Uh, next, next, next is going to be. Uh, I'm gonna throw this guy in the middle because we are done with the spider codes now, and I'm gonna move on. But I want to throw this guy in. Uh, this is the GEC, um, yeah, Northfield Unlimited. As you guys can see and this is all American made in Titusville Pennsylvania and this is 1095 steel really nice uh, traditional guys I do love this thing although I don't carry traditionals very often um, if I'm carrying one of course this is gonna be it and actually I think this is my uh, I, uh, I take that back I do have Swiss Army knife um, I don't really have a lot of traditionals guys um, I am definitely a locking blade type of dude for the most part, but I do love to carry this thing when I do, and I just usually throw them in my fifth pocket. Uh, I have a little um, collector knives uh, leather sleeve that I keep it in to keep it nice, but I mean, I'm not super worried about it, but you know, it's a user for sure, but yeah, great knife guys, great knife, uh, and all American made, so we'll put him up there. And next things to come is this sucker. Wham. Yeah, guys. Uh, this is the Microtech SOCOM Elite uh, manual, as you guys see. Even though it seems like an auto sometimes. Um, this is one of my favorite knives, guys, for sure. Uh, <laughs> just to kind of throw that out there. Super enjoyable. Um, the one thing I do have to mention is that this guy is not um, all American made because it is Bowler M390. Yep, so that's not made in America. But it is fully assembled in America and everything else is made in America and uh, assembled here. So yeah, it's mostly American made. And when you think of this, you think of an American made knife. So Microtech. Uh, next up is going to be... That's right, folks. Um, this is the Southern Grind Bad Monkey. Um, and this one was gifted to me uh, years back, almost 10 years now, uh, I think about seven or eight. And uh, I did work on a boat where the owner gave me this knife. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it in the past on my channel, I do talk about it in other videos. Um, I wasn't a fed ship guys, but the boat, I, he had another boat that he had made by fed ship. That was his mega yacht. <laughs> these dudes are super rich and um, his mega yacht uh, he had these made for his mega yacht but uh, the guys at my yard I, I worked at a fishing boat you know we made fishing yachts and he gave everyone fishing rods and he threw this in my locker um, surprised me with this only two guys which was me and the the supervisor that ran the whole show only me and him got these so I was super stoked um, I don't really talk about it that much because of that um, I don't want anyone to feel bad, but 
I, at the point when I got this, I didn't know what to do with it, guys. I mean, I did, obviously. I wanted to cut shit with it, but um, I, I I wouldn't use it because it was so expensive. It was like, I, there's no way I'm going to use that knife. Uh, at the time, I was buying Kershaw's and, and CRKT's. I wasn't ready to um, put a, you know, $275 knife to work. That I just wasn't there yet. Um, as you guys well know, I, I have more expensive knives than that that I put to work, but... Um, twice the, twice the money. So yeah, but, um, I do absolutely love this knife. Uh, it is Sandvig, uh, 14 C 28 N. So this isn't all American made, but this company is in Georgia and everything else is made here in the United States. I believe, um, I don't know where, you know, carbon fibers made and stuff that may be sourced. I'm not sure, but I believe that there it's mostly made in the United States and, um, Zach Brown, the country singer, which I'm not really in the country personally, guys, but um, yeah, when I lived in Florida, there, there's a lot of country down there. So uh, yeah, Zach Brown, everyone was so, you know, stoked for me when I got this guy. And uh, the company seems to make really nice products. And yeah, you guys, this thing's smoking. Um, I know a lot of guys think because this is 14C28N, it's not worth the money, but Hey, if this is done, you know, to the next level, like if you take 14C28N and do it right, uh, I think it's just as good as a lot of premium steels. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm going to send this guy to Kurt eventually, and we're going to give it a divot, and we'll see where that's at. It does perform pretty well for me and take, takes a nice edge. So, yeah, and I do love 14C28N. Just, you know, get that out of the way. But it is Sandvig, made in Switzerland. Not American made, um, as far as the steel is concerned. Uh, next up is Blamo. That's right, guys. Uh, CRK and Kosi with the natural micarta inlays. Guys, if you have not seen this knife on my channel yet, um, I can't believe it. But yeah, you will know that I absolutely love this. Um, uh, this is like a my grail knife of the year. Um, I, I kind of blew it there by telling you that because at the end of the year you're gonna you're not gonna know you're gonna already know what I'm gonna choose. But yeah, um, this thing is freaking smoking, and I did not expect to get one of these this year. But um, it kind of worked out. I I got the itch after I handled Steve's twenty five, and I you know tried to get a get one worked out and it worked out for me uh because of river's edge cutlery and um at this point now i'd probably just you know i would just go for it because i know i know that it's worth the 400 you know 550 bucks these things are going for it's worth it guys so i absolutely love this knife um this is made in america cpm s35 vn which is made in america um all american made Oop, where am i going uh, in Idaho. So yeah, really awesome. And even though the, the maker, the guy who started the company, even though I, I don't think he's, you know, he's not really in the day to day anymore. Tim, uh, his son has taken over and that's Mr. Chris Reeve. Uh, his son has taken over the, the taken the reins at this point, but yeah, uh, he is from South Africa. So even though, uh, the maker is from a different country, Hey man, Aren't we all from a different country? <laughs> Unless you're uh, Native American. So, yeah, really nice. Um, just amazing knife, guys. If you have not handled one of these, I highly suggest it. Highly suggest it. Uh, next up, we're going to get into some Benchmades, guys. Um, I do have a few out, so you're not going to see all of them. Uh, this is the Super Freak. This is the... Um, yeah, the 560-1. So it has a CPM M4 steel. This is a first production. Uh, G10 scales, G10 line. Well, this is technically just a glued together liner here. So this, this is glued. So it's not like a separate liner. This does have partial liners though. This thing is such a beast, guys. If you have not used a freak, a freak in general, much less a super freak, um, I highly suggest both of these knives. Um, any freak, but 
just one of the most ergonomic and just beater friendly, uh, just amazing knives. And if you have not tried M4, M4 is a, a smoking steel that takes a smoking edge and holds it for a really long time. Um, yeah, I love M4 guys. So I would highly suggest this knife or any freak in general, but uh, their S30V is excellent as well. Uh, Benchmade does a really good job with their S30. Uh, this guy did was tested and he did come up at 63 HRC. So yeah, that's right where we want it to be really. Um, and it shows in use. Oh, and by the way, guys, I, I know you did see this. This one was tested. I didn't talk about all the ones that were tested, but this one, 60 HRC, guys. Um, and now we know that there was another one that was 60 HRC. And, then, and that's within range because it's 59 to 60. So that's at the top of their range, um, both of the ones that we've tested. And then there was one, uh, Steve's 25 came up at 59. But the 25 was made when they were still doing um, 58 to 59. So at the top of the range, guys, and that's, that's just, you know, that's just excellent. That's what we want to see. That's what we should be seeing more often. So um, next up on the uh, docket is the Benchmade 550 um, Griptilian. This is the full size and very enjoyable knife. Um, it does have a uh, monkey men aftermarket thumb stud on there, big old beefy thumb stud. Uh, thanks to them. Uh, go check them out on Instagram if you haven't yet. They have some really cool like thumb studs and hardware and uh, pocket clip additions and stuff. So yeah, really cool stuff. And um, yeah, if you guys have not tried a, a Griptilian, it's just a good all around user work knife. Um, nice palm filling handle where you can use it all day and not really worried about it uh this is cpm uh, 154 this is one of the older ones and again uh american made oh, i'm sorry uh 154 cm not cpm 154 so yeah 154 cm steel uh frn handle scales uh which with partial liners you can see that there i don't have my flashlight uh partial liners but they do go pretty far back there so really durable knife guys great great work knife and very well priced as well uh next up is the 940 guys um yeah this is the knife works exclusive i believe it's the 940-1501 i might be wrong i'll put it at the I'll put it right there if, if I'm wrong. It might be the 1601, but I believe it's the 1501. And this is CPM um, 20 CV. Yeah, which is, uh, you guys know all about CPM 20 CV and M390, I'm sure. Uh, it is the, pretty much the brother of M390. And yeah. A uh, really nice knife, guys. And this is, again, uh, Monkey Men aftermarket thumb studs. The nice little accent uh, collar there. That was Got, got that from uh, Monkey Men on Instagram. And really enjoy that thumb stud. Looks great. And, I mean, you cannot mess that deployment up. And even I get under, behind. I'm glad I added the collar because I can still get behind it and a spidey flick so yeah really enjoy that next up the 940 <laughs> surprise surprise this is the s30v version um, i'm gonna have a video coming where i talk about uh the reblade on this because this has been rebladed if you guys saw this knife before it it had a black coated blade i'll explain why uh, in a different video this is one of my first uh, knives, uh, well, upgrade knives. Like I got this guy, then I got the bug out, then I got the 940. And uh, this was also one of my first mods as well as this. I did that MXG clip and I did this backspacer at the same time. So yeah, I bronzed that backspacer. I'm probably gonna bronze the, the um, access lock and the thumb stud as well. I'll just heat anodize those or yeah. So, 
We'll see. I might do that too, just to accent the bronze. I do absolutely love the 940, guys. And this, this is probably my favorite, to be honest, over that one. I like the aluminum scales. I like the way it feels. So, yeah. Uh, next up, uh, the last Benchmade I have here with me is the Mini Grip, guys. This is the, uh, man, I'm going to forget the number right now off the top of my head. 560 dash, ah, oh, I forget. This is the 20 CV version with uh, G10 scales, uh, blue accent G10 um, glued to the, the outside layer here. It's just like a liner glued. And um, these are full liners. If you guys don't know about that, the mini grip is full liners all the way back. Yep. So this is a really durable and beefy like little knife, guys. And I can get four fingers just barely on it. So you can actually get a lot of work done with this guy. And this has been rebladed as well. If you guys know, this is one of the first ones. I think I got this one after my 940. And this had a black, uh, black coating as well. Uh, this one came up low in the HRC test and they replaced the blade. So that's going to be a, I'm going to do both of these knives in a video talking about how Benchmade did a really good job with that. God, this video is getting long. Okay. Next guys, ZT. Um, moving on into the ZTs. This was made in Oregon, um, where ZT, uh, where Kai USA, you see there, Kai USA. Uh, this is the 0609 RJ Martin design uh, with the see-through pivot. And yeah, this is 20 CV, so we have an all-American made. Um, we're pretty much all-American except for uh, these guys over here. I think are the only ones that aren't all-American made. So if you want, you can just discount those two. But yeah. Excellent knife, guys. I love, really love this knife. This was Banner 24-7s, um, and he lent it to me to check out, and he made me an offer I couldn't refuse um, to buy it off him, and that's it. And this is going to get a custom anodizing on it. Probably going to do something fun with the flats and the, the chevron. So, upcoming. And guys, last but not least, um, one of my newer additions to my collection. Wham! That's right, folks. Uh, this is the Ferrum Forge slash Protec um, Mordax. Uh, this was done by Drop, so Drop was the one who facilitated it all, but um, Ferrum Forge is the designer and Protec manufactured. So. Oh man, guys, this was like, this hit a bunch of my, um, a bunch of my needs or wants, I should say, a bunch of my wants, which was, I really wanted another, um, Fair and Forge, of course, you guys know, I really do love their designs. Um, and I wanted a Protec really bad. I've been wanting a Protec for a long time. Uh, but I, I live in California and I can't really have autos. So, uh, they don't make a lot of manuals and I just hadn't seen one that really struck me yet. So in saying that, I saw this coming to drop, which used to be mass drop guys, and it still is right there, mass drop. Um, I wish they did this after, where now they take that off and it's just like right on the pivot, but it's okay, I, it doesn't really bother me. Uh, this is CPM 20 CV. So this is another all American made product, guys. I absolutely love this knife. And you guys will see a lot more of this on, on the channel. So, yeah, really stoked. Uh, and that's it, guys. That's the end of it. These are my American-made knives. I'm going to go ahead and back out a little bit. Um, bear with me. I don't have to back out much, really, because it's just those two guys up top. So, yeah. That's the whole shebang right there, guys. And um, I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you made it to this point. I know you probably didn't or a lot of you didn't. But um, if you do make it to this point, I want to say uh, thanks to you guys. I want to say thanks to Lee 
for tagging me in this and feel better. I hope you get better soon, man. I know uh, Lee just went through, you know, his own thing. And I, I, I just, man, you're my, my heart's with you, man. My, my thoughts are with you. So, um, feel better soon, man. I hope you, uh, recover quickly. You are a tough dude and I know you well. So, um, yeah, thanks for tagging me in this Lee. I, I enjoyed doing it. Um, it was a nice exercise. It also makes me get out my collection, makes me, uh, face myself a little bit. So that's good. Um, and then, yeah, and I want to tag two guys in this. Um, one of them is actually someone I don't think I've tagged before. I haven't mentioned too much on the channel, but, um, I got my buddy over at, uh, daddy -O EDC, um, Mason, just a really stand up guy, really cool dude. Um, who has a really great channel, um, has, has, um, great content. Uh, he's very intuitive. He's got just really good stuff. Um, and I would suggest everyone go check out Daddy OEDC. Uh, Mason, I'm tagging you, bro. I heard you say in your video just recently that you haven't been tagged. That was your first tag. So yeah, here's another one. <laughs> I'm gonna tag him. And then I'm also going to tag, um, uh, I was thinking, cause Mason, I, I don't really know all of his knives. So I was really in, in, um, intrigued and I wanted to see what he had. Um, and then the other guy I'm going to tag is, uh, Jack farm boy. Um, yeah, I want to tag Jack because, um, you know, he's just more of a budget option guy and I know he's going to have a different, different perspective than me. And he'll probably have some of the similar knives, but he's going to have a whole different, um, perspective. And he's another all American dude that's stand up. So I really want to see what he's got to go. And then, um, that's it guys. Um, I know this is already a long, um, very long video for what it is. So, um, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day.